Welcome to the second video in this Angular series of tutorials and in the first video I spoke about four properties using which Angular communicates uh, between HTML and TypeScript and uh, I showed them with examples. You can already see them here on the screen and if I maximize a little bit so those properties are already on the screen and uh, the first one is the string interpolation or you can uh, in simple words the variable from the component is visible in the HTML um, first one is string interpolation which is uh, the syntax is uh, given here and you can see this to string and this is a variable which is located in the TypeScript so the TypeScript variable is visible in the HTML uh, in this within this syntax so this is a string and it is visible on the screen in the browser so I spoke about basic things in the first video if you haven't seen that go see that first and I spoke how to um, uh, run the angular project and how to how to understand what is going on so basically we have an app component and we, we are going to build uh, uh, create further uh, multiple components inside app component and communicate with all those components and build an application which is a chatbot and this is the second video in that series and so I have already run the project and you can see that in the local host 4200 that is how Anglo works and I have created an input a field and a button a click and I have uh, displayed uh, an image using img tag of HTML so that's what I did in the previous video and using those examples I have shown you the four properties so the first one is as I said the string interpolation and the syntax is given here and the true string is a variable which is located here which is nothing as of now and I have the second one I spoke about is uh, the event binding event binding property so the event click is binded to a method here and when the, when a click happens the method is called and inside that method I have uh, given the image path to be something else that means uh, the image path variable has some image right now and when someone clicks the button the image will change that's what is happening so here it is there the image so this image tag is used to show the property binding so that is a property like source is a property of image tag and that is bound to a variable image path which will be changed when somebody clicks the button which is bound to event binding and above here I have shown string interpolation and the special case is two-way binding that means it is bound two-way the string uh, and the variable is connected in two ways and whenever you just start uh, typing or entering a string uh, variable into the variable so it, it connects the two elements which is shown in the example so I will show that once again so if I write something here it is shown here this is because of the two-way binding and this, when I click this the image changed and the image is shown here because of the property binding and when I click that this is changed that is because of the event binding so these are all the properties how angular communicates with um, you know HTML and TypeScript so in this video I am talking about five other important things from which you can manipulate HTML in angular so let's see what are those five properties the first one is the for uh, loop kind of for loop of HTML uh, this is the syntax for uh, the, the for loop for the HTML in angular and so here in angular uh, it is called as a directive and the name of the directive is ng4 and these special directives uh, in angular is marked with this uh, star uh, behind them and the syntax is like this let item of items so items is a variable from the typescript and you're looping that items items is a list um, and you're taking one item from that list at a time and you are printing whatever is there in the item so this is just like 
for loop in any other programming language so the ability to uh, loop through uh, the variables or the list from the typescript in html is given by angular using this directive ng4 so i have already created already created the items list in the component and it consists of three strings one two three and the html is just a paragraph and the paragraph is going to repeat three times and it's gonna print what is there in the list so if i go and check that in the browser i can see those two those three uh, strings right here and also it lets you create index uh, through this syntax i is equal to index and you can use that i uh, wherever you want inside the paragraph yeah so if i just write like this i if i save this so in the browser you can see one two three so it lets you get the index of the looping uh, element so one by one so that is ng4 so that is the first property and the second property i want to talk about is written here I take this here and put it here the second one is ng if yes it is just like an if condition in any other programming language and ng if is a directive and it is a special one and it is written with the star and this is a h1 element of an of h1 tag of uh, html and what ng if does is it only displays that html tag when a variable or depending on the condition so just like if condition so if some condition is true it will execute that uh, block if it is not if, if, it, if it is not it will not so that is how ngf works here so the alert variable if it is true then it will be visible if it is not true if it is false then it will not be visible so right now alert is equal to true in the ts which i have created already and alert so hence alert is true you should be a, you should be able to see h1 tag in the in the browser so if i so if i remove or change false now if i go to the browser you should not be able to see that so that is a function of nga so that is the second property which is very important to manipulate html so the third property is let me comment this here the third property is ng class so ng class is a property and it is bound using property binding you can see here using square brackets and what it takes it takes a string or a list of strings which gives it a special class so here i have used btn btm primary so this class comes within bootstrap module and this is the default class for buttons like btn btn primary danger they are the classes so i am going to give this button a primary class which has specific styles and when when i'm going to do that is depending on another condition using a variable from typescript so that is the able ability that's the ability angular is giving using ng class so I, here i am using btn btn primary and when alert is true so right now alert is false hence alert is false it is a normal button but let me make it true now if i reload see you can also see the uh, h1 tag because of the ng if condition being displayed and the button which is also being changed because of the ng class so that's the third property you want to you have to know uh, in the angular so the fourth one is ng style so what is ng style what does ng style does it is similar to ng class as it is also bound using property binding and you can guess from the ng class that ng style takes a styling 
uh, you know property of uh, a styling uh, a styling value so here i have used uh, the styling property as background color and uh, uh, color will be red if the alert is true and if it is not true then it is going to be green hence it is in the div so entire div will be uh, you know changed when the ng style changes so that is what happens with ng style in a nutshell ng style takes a value which is which is a css property and ng class takes a value which is a which is a predefined class in a css file so so right now hence the alert variable is true we are going to see red with hello text obviously as it is in the div and if i change it to false again everything else is going to be is also going to be changing now yeah hello is green that's what i meant so it is bound to a condition so that's that's the fourth property for you and the fifth one is similar to all of this but is but it is a core topic of directive so right now i have used some change color text in this div element and you can see this is not a normal syntax of html and there is nothing with this like just an id or something name or something no just change color and just like ng4 where you have used it with a html tag this is my own customized directive. So how I built this directive, I'll be showing you right now. So change color is a selector. You might remember a selector. A selector is something which will be in the component. And whenever you use that in an HTML, that component's view is going to be visible in the other HTML. So that's how selectors are used. And the selector for me, which I have used for my customer, custom directive is change color and I have created a folder here and inside that I have created a file and you can say, see the name it is directive.ts uh, it is not component component.ts it's a directive.ts and inside that you can see the difference it's directive and uh, inside components component and here you can see the difference I have selected selector as change color so here in the component ts app root so change color and with square bracket why is the same square bracket if i remove that without square brackets i need to use this as a html tag which i don't want i want to use this inside an html right now in this case so i'm using just like a property selector so change color is my selector so if i put this change color inside or uh, inside the uh, HTML uh, prop elements, HTML tags, then their properties will be changing according to the directive. So what my directive is not, uh, what my directive is doing here is changing the color. So, so you can see here in the directive, I have just exported a class with his name, and this is something which I want to explain in the in the further classes. This is implementing an interface on a net and if you implement this interface you have to override ng on a net method from that and what happens is when the angular uh, when the angular initializes all data bound properties this method uh, in this interface will be called and when it happens we want to change the background color of the element or of the tag of the HTML tag on which this selector is sitting upon. So when when Angular is loaded, when we will reload the page in the browser, the tag which has this change color directive will change its color to yellow. Let's see that. So let's see that in action. So if I save this and when it compiles, it says blah blah div blah blah and it changes its color to yellow. So wherever I place this, so wherever I place this change color, it's gonna be changing to hello. Let me let me change this h1 to hello, right? Yellow, hello to yellow. 
right yellow so that's my custom directive so you can create your own custom directive in your project angular project hence it will be a huge project and you you need to use multiple uh, you know um, you need to use multiple same functionalities multiple times so here the directive help you with that and you can do a lot of things you can uh, with the directive and in the further classes I'm, i'll be going to explain explain that and that is your fifth property for this class and don't forget to add the declaration for the directive which we created and, and otherwise you will not uh, see the uh, effect of that uh, directive in your uh, project in the next video i am going to explain you something which you something you should know uh, when you're developing angular app which is life cycle hooks that's what i spoke about the on and it interface which hooks to angular's timelines like when angular loads uh, this interface is um, ran so that that's how uh, the hooks works so there are multiple hooks there are multiple timelines of angular angular where you can put your hooks and execute few uh, operations so i'm going to explain multiple hooks life cycle hooks of angular in the next video till then take care bye i finally know how to live with that hurt in my spell i think that i am moving on cuz i do feel less broke